thing is, it's not enough. It's not enough high level black people in cannabis to talk about for to talk about that know the culture to speak on. That's a fact. That's the difference. That's a fact. Now, listen, that leads us right into it, guys. We are here for a special edition, a uh, special moment right now uh, with Eliza Brevard Rodriguez, Corey Jackson from the other side dispensary. Yes. Having a nice sit down, your beautiful home. Thank you so much for welcoming me yes. and my brother in. We appreciate, appreciate y'all so much. Yeah, for sure. Listen, I mean, I, first off, we appreciate your time, so I don't want to take too much of it. Um, but I do want to just kick it off. Just explain a little bit about who you are, your background, and what cannabis and kind of how you found cannabis. Let's just start there. Um, well, um, you know, appreciate the intro, Eliza Bravar Rodriguez, like B said. Um, so, I mean, I don't know where to start. I, I guess now I'm into wellness. That's really my path. Um, you know, physical practitioner based wellness services tied in with, you know, cannabis, alternative medicine. Um, and I really got here after, you know, really stepping into the other side of my life. You know, that's, that's the name of, um, of our spot. And, you know, I served 10 years in the military. I, uh, you know, had a regular day job. Um, I still have a regular day job. Uh, and after the military, you know, I, I've been on two combat tours. Um, I've been a deployed four times and, you know, now I have a daughter and just being away from home and, you know, just shifting the perspective of where my life was going. I feel like I got to an age where I started to evolve like the person that I was. I used to be young and wild and, you know, I, I went to the military, I got structure, I, I got success. Um, and I just really used all those things to leverage into this place, which like this place that I'm in really aligned with where my life, I guess, successfully landed at this time at 33 years old. And now I'm just fully tapped into it. Like, I just want peace. I want chill. I want good vibes, good energy. Like I'm on the other side, that war shit, they could keep it over there. You know what I'm saying? Like I did my, my time, um, you know, I'm all about my family and just like having, you know, a better, a better mindful, kind lifestyle, that's it. And good business. And good business, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like when you put out, you know, great energy and stuff, great products, like the business is gonna flourish. Corey and I are gonna be straight, like. 100%. Well, let me start by saying just thank you for your service. Appreciate okay. that, thank you, um, thank you. You, you obviously talk about being deployed twice, going to war twice, and then you just went through application process. Well, you're going through application process. <laughs> right. uh, people have, war. you know, yeah, people have described <laughs> it as such, right? But uh, in all seriousness, just talk about the application process. You're in the thick of it. You just were approved by the Jersey City Cannabis Review Board, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yep. And you're right in the thick of getting that approval from the CRC. Like, yeah. just talk about life right now. Um, it's it's scary because like you want to be excited and celebrate, but then you also want to stay focused and know that you know um, there's not really much to celebrate yet. You know, we still got a lot of work to do. Long way to go. So, um, but the application process, man, uh, I think what's so, um, you know, disheartening to me is that when we talk about um, being a minority in cannabis and, and the narrative that's out there, a lot of people don't really understand when they say, oh, it's expensive or, oh, there's barriers. Like people know that, I think, as a baseline, but no one really knows like the, the what that means. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I, I, I want to say to an extent, I, I guess I didn't really know what it meant either. I mean, I think as far as the application process, I knew that that was going to be difficult, but I think it's the hurdles in between that are just like whammies, mm -hmm. you know, like we started our journey in Hoboken and we thought we were good. You know, there's, there is two dispensaries that were close by, but they were not open and they were medical. Um, we also didn't know like how they were measuring things. Like, are you measuring when you talk about however many feet or distance they have to be apart? Is it door to door, street to street? Is it an official survey? You don't know. So they ended up um, denying our application because of the proximity. And we were like, again, celebrating. <laughs> like, yeah, we finally locked in a location. Like that's one of the hardest parts of this process. Mm -hmm. And then denial letter and it's back to the drawing board. You know, and I think that's happened to us time and time again for, for different things. No, 100%. So, I mean, so. You, you talk a lot about the journey, the hurdles. We have my man Corey Jackson sitting here. With, uh, I, I want to get into that, but before I do, Corey, what's your role in the company? And let's talk a little bit about that. So, I currently work for MSO in cannabis. I've been in cannabis 
um, for four, legally for four years. Okay. Um, and I'm a senior director of operations. I've worked in seven different states and done build stuff from the ground up, took down stuff, built brands, all that. Um, so me and Eliza are connected. Um, her wife I went to college with. Um, and then along with her journey of starting Sweat, um, her wellness brand, and want to convert that into cannabis, it became a, well, I know somebody that works in cannabis. So then we get together in Poly and start figuring out how we gonna do what it do. Um, and then once it, everything was a go, we made it happen. So I'll be COO or something. I'll make it, we'll make it run when we get it. For sure. Um, but you know, there's so many steps up that ladder to, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's what's so exciting is just like seeing you, your business, and just recognizing how you understood the importance of building a team. Yes. Right away. So yes. like, where'd that come from? Like how'd you know to do that? Um the military. Okay, okay. Yeah, the military, you know. Um I, I, I think even though I'm over that side of my life, there's so much there that I'm grateful for. I would not be at this place in my life if I did not join the military. Um and you know, it's not to uh, it's not to encourage people to go down that path. You know, I think that there's a lot of routes that people can take. But for me, it helped me rise up quick because, you know, I joined when I was 23. I'm 33 now. I'm just getting medically separated and retired. Um, and 10 years is not really a long time in retrospect. You know, I, I mean, I know these young kids out here, they, they out here making moves really early, but you know, I had to really hit the pavement and really grind and you know what I'm saying? I, I did all those tours, I saved my money, I went to school, I used the Navy for everything that they can give me. I got my master's degree out of them, my, my doctorate I'm doing right now. Like, I really made it worth my time, so I would never say anything about the military, but some things that it definitely taught me is um, teamwork and leadership. 100% what you need in this industry, right? Yes. You know, you need in any business for that matter. But, you know, when I look at cannabis and just how it's new, there is no blueprint, right? Um, you're kind of learning on the fly, yep. you know? Um, just talk a little bit about the application process itself from the day you put it into where we are today, like some of the hurdles you went through. You mentioned them earlier, but just be a little more descriptive. All right, so I'm gonna tell you guys this crazy story of like really how the whole thing came together. So. You know, I'm one of the words that I'm not a fan of is manifestation. I feel like the internet uses it very loosely and make everybody feel like they go, they gonna just think about it and not do no work and it's just gonna come. So I'm not a fan of that, but um, I feel like some type of a manifestation did come to fruition. I had one of my boys back in 2016 when they when the medical market was developing, and um, the governor at the time, I, I think it was Murphy too. He was really promoting veterans getting involved in the industry. And he had came to me like, yo, you should really do this. You'd be a great candidate. You're a female, whatever, whatever. And, and I was in the thick of being in the military that I wasn't thinking about the other side of my life yet. You know, I hadn't evolved. I hadn't done enough to be at this at this place mentally. So I kind of dubbed him and, you know, I was like, yeah, maybe one day, whatever, you know, because, you know, I used to burn when I was in college. And, you know, so anyways, long story short, I um, get hurt pretty badly when I was on tour and I came home and I started to um, burn, you know, to for my pain, um, use CBD products, topical products, things of that nature. And when the rec mar market opened up in, um, in Jersey, I was like, I think that this would be a dope way to scale sweat, a completely different business, but let me I could, like put this concept together. So my wife and I, um, end of last year, early this year, go to Miami and we're driving and I just come up with this whole idea in my head and I'm like, this is what we're going to do and we're going to, and we're going to get the license. And she was like, you're crazy. And I was like, no. And I called like three of my friends. I was like, yo, tell me about this and tell me about this. And I got like all my info and then she came up with a name and I was like, that was cool. It was something like aura or something like that. Yeah. Like those, those things we were throwing around. And then I just came out and I was like the other side. Okay. And then, yeah. So and what, then what, what is the other side? The other side of everything, the other side of sweat, the other side of my life, the other side of, of career, my career, legalization, mm -hmm. right? Going from prohibition of cannabis to legalization, the other side where the grass is always greener, mm -hmm. you know? Literally. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. 
Uh, Hopefully. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, um, so the application process, right? So then I'm like, all right, we're going to do this. So I lock myself in my house for like three days and I write the application. You write the application. I wrote the application. Like you. Yep. Yeah. We didn't have a lawyer until it was time to appear before Jersey City Board. Yes. So Every you submitted your application. You wrote your application. I wrote everything. She wrote everything. I, I, Corey helped with some things and another colleague of ours in the business, sure. Candace, she wrote one of the really, really important pieces, which is the regulatory compliance plan, which is like some super lawyer shit. Uh -huh, She's really, really bright. We have great, sure. that's one thing too, like our team, like we have black excellence mm -hmm. up, up and down, like, but we'll get into that later. But <laughs> I wrote the whole thing, security plan, inventory control plan, business plan, business plan uh, yeah. social impact plan, wow. community plan, wow. everything. The lease application, the lease contract. The lease contract. So, man, like you got, you got to, you got to hit me right now. Hold on. People pay thirty to sixty oh, we grand, know. grand for grand. We know. consultants. Yeah, we know. That's why I'm sitting here. With, I don't know what to say. Like. Well, well, similar, similar to like you were saying, B. Um, think of it. Our team collectively wrote everything ourselves. Mm. No lawyer involved, mm. and we still already spent fifty grand. Talk about so imagine it. So imagine Talk if we it. had had to hire someone. Talk yeah. about so like it. 50k before you have anything. License. You have anything. Okay. So you writing their own stuff. So to get approved for at a board meeting, mm -hmm. you already got to have a letter of intent for leasing a location. Mm -hmm. Now all the landlords know that. Yep. So you got to get them bred up front, and you don't even know if you're approved to be in that location yet. So just so we're clear, you guys are paying on a lease right now for a non-operational business. At well, we're in a contract. She. Her contract writing skills, we got five months without paying. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but, Great job. But that's not normal, though. Uh, of course. Even still, though. Yeah. Five months going by fast. Yeah, and, and this, and mind you, this is our third location we found. The first two wasn't trying to hear that. Of course, yep. yeah, for sure. And just to, to uh, go a little deeper on, on the um, LOI, every municipality or township doesn't necessarily take that. Some mm -hmm. of them want fully executed leases. Sure. So if you got the LOI, you could just be like, listen, this is my intent. This is what I'm going to do. And you could take it to, you know, I think, I think um, Hoboken was allowing for LOIs, but Jersey City was like, nope, signed, sealed. Mm -hmm. You figure that out. We want an official lease. And if you do an official lease, mm -hmm. you got to pay something. You yeah, pay yeah, straight up. Straight up. You got to pay security. You got to pay location, brokers. you're paying 10 grand a month or 100%. plus 20 for, grand. For a business you don't even have. For a business you're waiting to get an approval. <laughs> so and right now our spot is in the Heights. It's beautiful. It's uh -huh. sitting in a vanilla box, untouched, just oh, there. Yeah, oh, man, look, we can't wait to see it. You know, yeah. we can't wait to see it. You, yeah. you said something that really hit me. Um, black excellence. Yes. And you know, just talking to you off camera, I know that you are very uh, black and brown centric, yep. right? Yeah. Um, very much for our people. Talk a little bit about your business model and how it pertains to you wanting it to be black and brown focused. Well, one. I don't think that there are too many brands in this particular space, the dispensary and consumption lounge space, which is very new, mm -hmm. that are spaces that are for the culture. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that that really exists. Um, you know, I think we could fill that void, especially on the East Coast, mm -hmm. especially on the East Coast. Um, and I don't know, Corey, what would you add? <laughs> uh, the reality is, and I know I'm, I'm an executive in the cannabis industry, there's no one else there. Mm -hmm. If you don't own the company or start the brand, there are no other black and brown folks there yeah. for the most part. Yep. Mm -hmm. So like probably the biggest black person in cannabis is probably Al Harrington with Viola. Mm -hmm. But he's also already a millionaire, already has notoriety, and he's in California, which is probably one of the easier states to get a license. Mm -hmm. It's much different if you're just a regular person trying to start from scratch. One, you got to have a bread. Mm -hmm. um, Two, you got to have the actual know-how to fill out the application, do all this stuff. Yeah. Um, and then you can't quit. You just got to keep going. Like, we've been told no too many times already. Mm -hmm. And the reality is we still got to get approved by the CRC. Mm -hmm. We still got to get approved by the actual Jersey City Planning Board. Mm -hmm. Like, we only got our first yes. Right, right. Um, <laughs> and been doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, you know, she checks every social equity box on the planet. Mm -hmm. And I bring actual experience to it still just got our first yes yeah so you know 
sometimes you make things hard. Mm -hmm. That's why certain groups of people aren't in it, right? Sure. And then you put the financial aspect of it and all that in, mm -hmm. in place, and you still might catch a no. Mm -hmm. We called a no from Hoboken with all that. Right, um, right. And with her wife originally being from Hoboken right. and her having a business in Hoboken, mm -hmm. still got told no. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, you know, it's, it's a game you got to play and you just got to keep going and going and going. Um, but it's rough. No, for sure. I, yeah. I really appreciate both of you and your transparency. Because I, I feel as though in this industry, it's either black or white, right? Mm -hmm. Either you hear the great stories that just turn out to be fantastic, or you hear about majority of them that just go left, right? Yeah. You guys are really talking about going through these hurdles, fighting through the adversity, being told no three times, three locations, right? And here you are right now, again, on the brink of still needing two more, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, <laughs> What, what's what's the advice you would give someone else that's either looking to apply for a license, <laughs> just apply for a license, is fighting through some of those things you may have fought through six months ago? It's set up for you to fail. If you go in there knowing that, mm -hmm. if you have that in your mind, like, then you won't take it personal. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not personal. It's business and it's a system, just like yeah. any other. Mm -hmm. But like she said, it's set up for you to fail. Mm -hmm. So you got to already know that, like, you got a 5% chance of really doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and even with that, of people awarded licenses, 40% don't, never actually open a store. Mm -hmm. Right, they so, can't come up with the money. Yeah, so, so there's that part to it. The other thing is, especially if you're trying to go our route, which is mostly do it ourselves DIY, mm -hmm. um, and then do personal investment from black and brown folks, there's a difference. Most of the people we see up there getting approved is one person that's community centric, they're from the community, they live in the community, all that. And then you see a whole team of lawyers behind them <laughs> that you know a regular person couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. And it's because someone from Cali, someone from Colorado already came through and they've already sold away that business. 100%. They standing up there by themselves, but they've already sold that, mm -hmm. that business is already signed for by a MSO mm -hmm. or, or somebody that already exists. For sure. That's their, it, it, there's no MSO here. Mm -hmm. I personally work for one. Mm -hmm. They don't have nothing to do with this. They don't do business in the state. Mm -hmm. We are doing this. Our team are, is doing this. There's no group in Colorado or somewhere on the West Coast secretly funding us mm -hmm. um, <laughs> to try to hurry up and get their brand in here mm -hmm. without the state knowing. Um, and that's the reality. You know, I work in MSO. I know how that go. Mm -hmm. uh, when MSOs are trying to get into a state, they're looking at every employee on their deck. Who live in that state? Who's from that state? Who ever paid taxes in that state? Mm -hmm. Did you ever go to college in that state? Because the state wants to see some connection to it, right? For sure. And then they pay a whole bunch of lobbyists to do what lobbyists do, and they get in there, they get their license. Mm -hmm. Or if that don't work, they just outright buy out a little guy. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we've seen that even in Jersey. Green, Green Garden State Dispensary, which has been around for a while, got bought out by Air Wellness. Mm -hmm. You know, it's big, feet, big fish eat little fish. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of it. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not us. For sure. So... <sighs> At, at this stage, what's the message you guys want to get out there? I mean, you you bust your asses, you built a team, you know what's up, you know the industry, you know the hurdles, right? What's the message you guys want to get out to the world as you're looking to open up as soon as possible? Um, the message that I want to send to other black and brown people? Yeah, 100%. You got to get in this. Yeah, you got to do it too. Find find your thing, mm -hmm. whatever it is. When you say find your thing, like talk a little bit, I know where you're going with that, right? There are so many aspects yes. of cannabis. <laughs> and, and too often we think of it as one singular thing yep, or yep. cultivation of bud tending. And there's yep. a million things you could do. And you being someone that came to the other side, yep. talk about those other things that are out there, right? Like, and I know I know you even mentioned with your employment, you're obviously working with Minority Cannabis Academy, yes. looking to hire black yep. and brown folks. There you go. So That's it. Obviously, we're eager for the same message, just getting our people to understand that there are opportunities in cannabis outside of just being a bud tender, outside of just cultivating, yep. you know? So um, I, I, I guess I guess the next the next thing is just what can we expect from the other side once it is open, fully operational? We want our people to obviously come and participate and obviously be a part of your uh, you know you, you guys rise. What can we expect from it as an organization? Becoming a household name for sure. Becoming a place that people want to travel from. You know, in, in New Jersey, I think consumption lounges are only going to be allowed in maybe like nine cities right right now. Oh, wow. Have okay. approved it, right? Okay. So, yeah. um, I think people are going to come out of their way mm. to, to come there. I think that they're they're going to want to seek out that experience because it's going to be 
everything that we haven't seen, you know? I mean, we're gonna have premium product. It's gonna be a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be calm. It's gonna be a great vibe. That's what I want people to come in and just like, you know when you could like feel people's energy, like 100%. when people are on a certain vibration as mm -hmm. you, I feel like people are gonna come in there and they're just gonna get that. Mm -hmm. And I want them to know like that minorities are our leaders mm -hmm. like we are you know what i'm saying like black True. people are leaders women are leaders like veterans are leaders you know like stop trying to keep us out of stuff mm -hmm. you know y'all keep us out of stuff and then when we do stuff that's fly y'all copy it and, and put it on your shit mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like that's that's whack we got you know what i'm saying like I'm, sure. I'm about to have a doctor like i'm not trying to <laughs> i'm not trying to shake <laughs> but you know what i'm saying like i i can write a few things that's obviously true. i wrote clearly, a whole application like, like, right clearly right like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so, so how do we stay in contact with you? What's your Instagram? What's your socials? What's all that? Um, yeah, so listen, follow the other side, mm -hmm. TOSD underscore lounge. Okay. Um, our consumption part has been, uh, you know, we ain't, we, ain't, we ain't get through the whole process yet. Okay. Yeah. okay. But the branding is there, TOSD lounge. Corey, you, you want to throw your stuff out there? <laughs> All my stuff, private. Corey like to stay low, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm low, I'm Corey behind said, the scenes. don't bother me. It's like, nah, nah, nah. Yeah. for, for nah. me, everything is Eliza, you know? It's yeah. like, you know what I mean? I, I'm a, a cog and part of the system that's pushing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but you know, we we on the same path, same goal. Nah, real talk. Um, nah, so, he's so. an integral part of the system <laughs> because you got to understand it. We, all right, we're doing this building now and, you know, I've owned other businesses, so this is kind of my, my wheelhouse, but... Or he knows weed. You know what I'm saying? I smoke weed, but I, yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying. You really, really need that, and people gotta understand that's what we bring into the table too. Because a lot of these places, like he said, they're on the executive level. There are not a lot of black and brown people. So the fact that he has touched that and been in there and knows those spaces, he wasn't, you know, no disrespect, but he wasn't, he wasn't at the bottom. He was doing his thing. So for me to get one of the very few black men that work in this space Listen, and bring his expertise, 100%. like, man, the other side is where it's at. 100%, and Corey know his shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We, we've had talks. We've had talks, long talks, yeah. long yeah. rides in the goddamn uh, Listen, it's, <laughs> yeah, we took some road trips. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, listen, I appreciate y'all's time again. Um, you said so many so many great things, but I'm gonna walk away just thinking, this is set up for us to fail, but so what? Yeah. Yep. But so what? Yep. And right. go get trained at MCA. hundred yep. percent. Go get trained at MCA. And listen, we got the entrepreneur event happening in Atlantic City, September 9th. Go register. Registration's open till August 19th. You probably got a couple days by the time this drop. All right. We're out of here, y'all. Peace.